Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with Valley PBS. Today we are chatting with Michelle DeBudio, Executive Director of the Valley Caregiver Resource Center. Michelle has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Michelle, for joining us today. Thank you for having us. So the Valley Care Resource Center provides a whole range of different services. Talk mm -hmm. about the scale of your services, how you started, and how you have evolved to today. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, back in 1988, we started out with just the Caregiver Resource Program. And so this is a program that helps families who are taking care of their loved one but not being paid to do so. I'm not sure if you realize, Mark, but um, at this time, if you're taking care of a family member and you're age 65 and older, you have a 67% higher mortality rate than the person you're, that's not taking care of someone. And so this, we've realized that how are we going to reach these people because it has a domino effect. If the caregiver is not getting the care that they need, then the care recipient isn't either. And as you know, then comes abuse and neglect and other uh, array of issues. So at this point, the, our program goes into the home, goes into the, um, to meet with the family caregiver and assesses their situation. So these are trained counselors that go in and um, they talk with the family consultant, they ask them, they go through very difficult questions about what their state of mind is, what's their depression level. They don't ask it like that, but they go through an array of questions that's very comfortable for some them. Some of the physical challenges, some of the financial challenges, the 67% statistic actually hides even the magnitude of the problem because the 67% statistic is about the mortality rate. Correct. But you also have the level of stress in that family, in the community, you have the fact that that level of stress leads to a, a, um, a greater health impact, it reduces their work productivity, um, and it has so much resonance within the community when you have so many people um, in distress, which can be addressed. And, and you're coming in to basically first evaluate. Now once you do your evaluation, what comes next? Well, our main objective is to help the family caregiver begin their journey. So many times people start out without any information. They're kind of thrown into that they have to take their family member or maybe home from the hospital, and they have no resources or no knowledge of what to do next. So we want to be that entry point. We want to help them begin that process. That may be trying to find in-home care. It may be even placement. It may be um, how do they take a break, doctor's appointments. We want to be that resource for them to get through their day-to-day -day, um, situations. I wanted to also mention the different resources we do give them are we can provide respite through in-home care agencies because depending on funding, we can give them a break. Most of our family caregivers are doing it 24-7 and there's usually one specific family member that's designated to be the caregiver. Right. And so we try to teach them to go outside the box and think of other people that they can maybe ask for help and that's very difficult in their situation. We also give legal counsel. Um, we also have uh, short-term counseling with a professional. And then we also have, in our counties, we have about 25 support groups in about 40 classes that we offer annually. And this is so important because so often people who um, have reached that age find themselves alone without an advocate, and you serve as, as a trusted intermediary between somebody who is elderly and might be very frustrated with his or her situation and an organization that may be trying as their level best to help but get into their own heads as well, you try to actually find a way to bring people together to a greater sense of, of, of peace with a situation which is very difficult to be at peace with. Exactly. And when you think about how many people are out there that are seniors, right now, let's just look at how many caregivers are just in Fresno County. We're anticipated to be have about 147,000 um, family caregivers. And these are unpaid family caregivers. So when I look at that picture, this is what motivates me because what are those families doing? What are they doing with their family members? How many of them have dementia? And most people aren't educated on how to take care of somebody with dementia. And this is where it comes our other program, our Oasis and Pals program, because we find that there's a need to get those people, these families, to release 
in essence, mm -hmm. their family member to a day program that can benefit not only their family member, but for them because it gives the caregiver a break. Right. So these two programs are for people with dementia. Our PALS program is for people who are higher functioning. Most likely they've just been recently diagnosed. Um, we've had a couple of caregivers who, um, whose family member has tried to drive to our organization. And we've had to say, you know, that's not allowed. That's how high functioning they are. So this is a group where they can identify with other people. They can talk about um, the good times. It's uh, kind of like a coffee group. Mm -hmm. But yet we have activities from the minute they um, enter the program to when they go home at night. And what happens is that all of a sudden these people are renewing their dignity and their self-esteem because people with dementia are treated totally different than other ailments. Um, and it's due to lack of understanding. And then our other program, which is like a sister program to it, our OASIS program, we um, have participants at all different stages of dementia or Alzheimer's. So they could be at the beginning or they could be towards the end. It's a social model. Um, we provide um, engaging and stimulating activities that meet the participants where they're at, whatever need they may have. We currently have a gentleman in there that um, worked for the Fresno Hillmonic. And so he goes in there and plays piano all the time and sings for our participants. And so he just, th it's an extension of who he was. And more than likely, um, what we see is caregivers, because they don't know what to do, leave their family members at home in front of a TV, something to distract them from asking them questions or right. it's tiring being with someone with dementia sometimes. Right because it's kind of, it's an endless um, cycle. But yet, there are ways and there are treatments and there's techniques to work with people with dementia so that's beneficial not only for the caregiver, but also for the care recipient. They can thrive in their disease. And each of us, it, just because we are suffering decline, which can take very many forms, it can, it can take the form of dementia, it doesn't take away that we have value to add exactly. to our families, but, but we have more need. And we are not accustomed to adults going through a cycle of more need. What we're trying to do here is to adjust society so that we can more, in, in a more peaceful way, yes. provide for actually ourselves, because you could have dementia eventually, I could, it could affect us all. And if our society is not taking care of us all, what are we about as a society? Exactly, and, and the issue that I see is that society thinks this is something that's already being taken care of, either by the families or by the government. And um, it's not happening It's somebody way. else's responsibility, exactly. but it's actually an invisible issue. Exactly. Because people don't stand up, They're, they might be embarrassed, they might feel a reluctance to draw attention to themselves, but it is there. It's in every every family's household in one way or the other. And it's not a situation where people maybe didn't plan for the future or they didn't have the right health care. Situations have come up. As you know, health care has increased. Um, the expense has gone off the chart. Or people are living longer. So it's not that this generation hasn't planned for their own self-care, but situations culturally have impacted it. What kind of a budget do you have? We have a budget that relies right now, to be honest, on federal and state grants. I am working diligently trying to get the community to stand behind us more so we can get more community grants and more um, private donations. So what is your annual budget? It's about 2.3 million. And how many people um, do you care for in one way or another? To, to how many people do you provide services in, in some form? On an annual basis, about 14,000. So 14,000, you have, a, you have a, a little bit over a $2 million budget. Mm -hmm. If you were to go away, if you were to disappear, if all these services were to disappear, what would happen? There would be, I think, a um, influx of people being put under Medi-Cal beds in facilities. Um, in addition, those people would not get any the support they need. So I think you would have an increase in financial abuse, sexual abuse, um, physical abuse. Um, our participants in the day program would be at home and left to situations that would be extremely unhealthy. In terms of the future for the organization, what would you 
wish for the organization over the next years because as, as many services as you provide, the need is greater than the services that you are able to provide right now with your level of funding. The number one thing that I would really, uh, that I work towards daily is awareness. That so many people, because we have a small budget, we can't do the marketing that... That uh, people that, actually uh, talk about this issue. Yes, exactly. And so we're always getting that, we wish we would have heard about you sooner. I wish we would have known that you were here. I wish that you know I could have used your... Um, your resources at an earlier point. So that's the point that I would like to make, you know, is that how do we bring awareness more uh, for people to spread the word? Um, so that's the number one. And two, again, more, more community contributions so that we could provide more help for our families. Well, together with Valley PBS, we are going to give our very best effort to help draw attention to this really important organization the Valley Caregiver Resource Center. Michelle DeBudio, thank you so much for sharing the information about this really essential service provided to, to this region of America, of California, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.